Hi guys, this is Jason on Wacom and I'm here with one of the most interesting high mid-range phones of the summer. It's the Realme GT6. It's called the flagship killer, it's got AI, it's got a beautiful design and the camera is not half bad. Of course, Snapdragon 8 S Gen 3 inside and a Sony Litia sensor at the back. Plus, once again, a beautiful design uh, which is actually close to a flagship and a very, very bright screen. Now the price tag should be around 500 to 600 euros. There is also a Realme GT60 version, but that's not available in Europe. Now, as far as the design is concerned, we have here the uh, silver version and this metallic looking band around the camera is special. It reflects you and helps you take selfies with the uh, main camera. This is called a nano mirror design. It's the band here and there have been 30 special processes applied here to achieve this look. The phone measures 8.6 millimeters in thickness and weighs 199 grams. It's available either in fluid silver, razor green and uh, yeah, the green version is also pretty good looking. Now, um, other things worth mentioning is that we have a case in the box which helps with the grip. Um, I have to say this uh, bright, uh, this uh, glossy area draws a lot of fingerprints and lint. The frame appears to be made of metal or a very tough plastic. The weight is well distributed and I have to say there is also IP65 certification. My guess is that this is uh, rather plastic than glass. I may be wrong. Okay, so now as far as the screen is concerned, you can see it's pretty immersive and we're dealing here with an OLED 6.78 inches in diagonal and it's got a resolution of Full HD+. It promises to reach 6000 nits units. Um, and also it's the first 6000 nits phone on the market. It's got Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and a 10-bit panel. We got here a classic YouTube clip ready for you, so you can actually use it to do the classical test. We got the clip here. Here we go. It's a pretty immersive experience. It's one of the quality OLEDs, and even though it's gently curved, it doesn't bother you when gaming. It's very bright and crisp, not much to complain about. We've got wide view angles, as you can see for yourself. Crisp, vivid colors, good contrast in the, even in the full sunlight. Once again, not much to complain about. And now let's show you our results we achieved when we did a Luxmeter test. Here we are. This is the Realme GT6 page on our sister site. And when it comes to the brightness, we got 1004 lux units which means it's superior to the iphone 15 pro vivo x90 pro xiaomi 13 ultra and a ton of other flagships i mean it's below the galaxy s24 ultra huawei pura 70 ultra and the xiaomi 14 as well as the oneplus 12 but those are other league handsets this is a ltpo panel by the way so we can definitely tweak down the brightness speaking of which we also have other features here like uh, for example you can tweak the brightness i'm doing here extra brightness, there's a screen color mode here, which you can also tweak, natural tone display, bright HDR video, auto rotate, screen resolution can be set up as well as a refresh rate. Okay, now going further, it's time to talk about the CPU benchmarks and hardware. Okay, so first things first, uh, let me find the IDA app and show you the processor. Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 S Gen 3, the lighter version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Three. It's accompanied by 16 gigs of RAM as well as 512 gigabytes of flash storage. Okay, so that's that. And um, as far as I know, there's no micro SD card slot here. And uh, let's see how we did when it comes to the throttling test. So go here to the photos, go to the albums, go to the screenshots, and we should have it here. It lost 16% performance uh, throughout the test, and it's not exactly bad. I also didn't seem to overheat when running intense games like Call of Duty Warzone. Okay, so in the benchmarks we achieve the following results. We start off with Antutu 10, where we're just above the Motorola H50 Ultra with the same CPU. We're also beating the last year 4 flagship Xiaomi 13T Pro. Keep in mind we surpass Sony Xperia 1V and also the iPhone 15, even the Google Pixel 8 Pro. Um, we score below the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, by the way. And... Uh, Next up, let's also talk about Geekbench, which is this one here. In the multi-core subtest, we beat the Galaxy Z Flip 5, which is not bad. We beat the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phone and the OnePlus Open. It's a bit more relevant the fact that uh, uh, we're beating the OnePlus 12, which is actually a shocker. And above it is the Xiaomi 13 Ultra and the Honor Magic 6 Pro. When it comes to the 3D benchmarks, we have them all here stacked up. This is a GPU test. 
It's above Galaxy Z Fold 5, which is not bad, and the Realme GT3, which is to be expected, while the unlimited test shows us just below the OnePlus 12 and above the Nothing Phone 2. Overall, it's a pretty okay set of results, but beware of the temperature. So, uh, when it comes to the um, temperature test here in benchmarks, 41.8 degrees Celsius in benchmarks, quite high, uh, but in games, 31.4. So, don't be scared about gaming, just beware of the benchmarks. Now, the battery is a rather large 5500 mAh unit. It's a dual cell battery with a special chip meant for powering up the device and a special adapter in the box 120 watts charging. It's supposed to last uh, 1600 cycles without having any sort of damage or problem. Now, the battery tests are quite impressive. We achieved a huge 28 hours and 42 minutes of continuous video playback. It's a fourth placed phone in all of our tests. It's right below the Galaxy S24, and I would say that it's the LTPO panel to praise here. We're only surpassed by three phones, the Honor Magic 6 Pro, uh, also the Asus ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, we beat the Galaxy S24 Plus, S24 Ultra, Realme 12 Pro Plus, iPhone 15 Pro, Huawei Pura, a lot of them. We're also doing fine in continuous usage, 17 hours, 44 minutes, we're beating the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro and a variety of flagships. Um, so yeah, that's a lot. We're only surpassed by the OnePlus 12, Huawei Pura 70 Ultra and a few other phones. I'm pretty sure we're also beating flagships aside from the uh, Asus ROG phone. I see we're also beating the Huawei Pura 70 Pro, Zenfone 6, Zenfone 9, Zenfone 10 and the Nothing Phone 2. The charge requires 29 minutes, which is satisfying and in 15 minutes you're at 63%, so you should be all set to go. Okay, so Time to talk about the acoustics. We don't have an audio jack, but we have a speaker here. And um, from what I know, we should have the infrared emitter, uh, excuse me, we should have the uh, earpiece here. Okay, so yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that one of these holes here may also help with the diffusion of the sound. Now, let's do the actual test, which involves a special sample, which we rely on. This one here. Plenty of volume, plenty of bass, but it's the bottom speaker doing the heavy lifting. The top one doesn't offer much, so there's a lack of balance between them. I'm satisfied with everything, there's no distortion, so the top speaker isn't exactly performing, that's for sure. This is the acoustic sample test, 78.6 decibels at the top and 91.1 decibels at the bottom. It's clearly the bottom one doing the heavy lifting. This is a very high result, usually we see something like 85 decibels. And we surpassed, uh, let's see here, some relevant phones. Honor 200 Pro with a similar CPU has been surpassed, even though it performed quite a bit. I'm pretty sure we surpassed the Galaxy S24 series, the entire series, and we scored uh, below other models here, which seem to be older. They used to make phones with higher volume back in the day. Vivo V23 and Vivo X60 Pro are two of them. In gaming, 95.3 decibels. I've seen better here. Um, let's see which phones we surpassed. Okay, so it's at the bottom part of the uh, top here. We surpass Galaxy Z Fold 3, Huawei P50 Pocket, Xiaomi 12T Pro, Honor Magic 4 Lite, no heavy hitters, Motorola H50 Pro being probably one of the few. In the end, once again, button speaker doing the heavy lifting. And finally, now let's talk about the camera. Okay, so time to talk about the camera. Um, now, as far as the selfie camera is concerned, we're dealing here with a 32 megapixel shooter cut in the screen. At the back side, we have a triple camera, the main sensor being a Sony Litia 808 50 megapixel f1.69 aperture with optical image stabilization. Then there's a telephoto camera, a Samsung 50 megapixel, and also ultra wide Sony IMX 335 8 megapixel camera. We don't have an idea of the exact uh, optical zoom level, but I guess is somewhere 2x or 2.5x. You've seen the options of the camera in the unboxing, so let's go straight to the gallery. We have a lot of shots here, some in Bucharest and some in Milano, so yeah, 299 photos, one more and we would have had 300, like the Spartans. Okay, so first things first, we're going to start off with the selfies taken by my colleague. I would say they're very crisp and very detailed. These are in the shadow, which completely changed the outlook of the shots. Let's see them here which is better. I actually enjoy the focus a lot and the details. You can see every thread of hair, every skin pore, and the eyes are pretty expressive. And the bokeh cuts the character perfectly. 
have to say this is among the mid-rangers that do a fine job. It's hard for me to tell if it's better or less than the Motorola H50 Ultra or the Honor 200 Pro. I would call it the equal or the superior of the Honor 200 Pro. It's truly one of the good ones. So, selfie checks out. As far as the daytime capture is concerned, it's time to talk about the colors and things like that. Okay, so let's get going. Plenty of vegetation, it's the summer and the tendency is to oversaturate and overexpose, uh, which doesn't exactly happen here very often, although I do see a white sky and also I do see a pretty crisp vegetation, to be honest. At least we have a, a automatic HDR to solve things for us. Now, if you're going for ultra white, there's a lot of deformation happening on the side for the objects and details are underwhelming. It's still an 8 megapixel camera, to be honest. The shadows are fine, the colors are fine, although once again the sky is a bit too white for my liking. And this is the zoom, things are decent up to 3x, maybe even 5x, but apart from that you're going to get a serious level of noise. You may get some surprises thanks to the processing at around 10x, but in between you'll not be that impressed. Okay, so plenty of texture here. Texture is met both in the pet photos. By the way, mm, I didn't know that aside from the iPhone, other phones could take such nice bokeh of animals. And we also have some nice close-ups. I wouldn't exactly go ahead and call them macros, but the close-ups are gorgeous enough to not warrant the need of a macro. Some pretty solid colors here all around. Some beautiful reds. Let's find other colors as well. We have this fence here with the yellows, with the blues. They're pretty well kept in check, I wouldn't say they're overblown. The colors are more tame than the ones of the Honor 200 Pro, for example. This is closer to the realism of the Motorola H50 Ultra. By the way, this is a very nice shot, which properly focuses on the object in the foreground and slightly blurs the background. We were in Ibiza for a bit and we took some shots there. And the zoom is actually not that bad, considering we're only operating at around 2x or 2.5x. Culinary photos in Milano, where the phone was launched. Uh, I've seen better culinary photos, to be honest. It struggles a bit to focus in really close close-ups, but the texture is there. The pizza in Italy was actually underwhelming, I have to be honest, but at least the texture is spot on in the photos. I should have some gelato here, but it melted really fast, so I can only show you some ravioli. Once again, I've seen better food photos, if I'm being completely honest, taken including with an Oppo or Reno 12 Pro recently, so yeah. I mean, these aren't bad, but it's the fact that I've seen better, that's the thing here. And these are the colorful streets of Milan, where we went for a walk. Once again, colors are a bit more tame and realistic, that's something to remember here. If you're going for realism, this may just be the phone for you, and it was also a cloudy day. This is the main camera. This is the ultra wide camera, which as you can see decreases the detail a little bit, especially on the sides. Okay, so that's about it. We cover bokeh, close up and um, zoom. And I think it's time to address the nighttime capture. For the night, we're back in Bucharest and uh, let's actually talk about it. Okay, so uh, things are, I would say, mid range, typical mid range, not exactly something to write home about, not exactly something memorable. They're pretty dark. I don't see many reflections though, and the street light halos don't seem to be over amplified. I mean, the shots are just okay, they're not memorable compared to what we fared with the Oppo Reno 12 Pro, with the Honor 200 Pro, the Motorola H50 Ultra. The good thing is that uh, the night mode pulls some details from the distance closer. So if you're using the night mode, you're going to get plenty of details, that's for sure. But in no way I felt that the street lights were affected by the night experience, which is nice to see. On the other phones I mentioned before, you may actually be required to use the night mode to solve all your problems with the street lights. Here, the problems don't actually happen. And the night mode may only be needed for a twist of the image, but the basic image without the night mode is just as good, or almost. There are no bothering reflections, the halos are kept to a minimum, there's plenty of detail and warm hues. So yeah, night mode is not a must, but it's there in case you really want to make things brighter and clearer. Okay, so this has been everything concerning the photos. We have 27 videos, quite a few of them, and I can already tell you, without opening them, there's overexposure. You can see these artificial greens lighting all the way up, overexposed and oversaturated. It's the summer, the sun is very powerful, and this is what happens. I do like the variety of hues. It may be the 10-bit panel of the screen, but I like the variety. 
this is one green, this is another type of green, this is the other type of green, but every now and then, in some parts hit by the sun, there is overexposure. We also have colors, which are actually quite satisfying. I like these colors better than uh, the ones I saw on the Oppo Reno 12 Pro, to be honest. Once again, more realistic. The panning happens fine, and I'm actually curious about the stabilization. You can definitely walk around in both 4K and in the special stabilized mode without any sensing any vibration or trepidation of the image. So yeah, the stabilization checks out. Now let's see how it's doing when it comes to focusing. We're focusing on the roses and then quickly on other subjects to the left, to the right and also to the top. Not bad focus at all. Okay, we also caught some uh, butterflies leaping from one flower to the other and we have extra stabilization tests that were moving around. So excellent stabilization, excellent focus, plenty of dynamic range and hues, but every once in a while there's a bit of overexposure. And that's the daytime scenario. We also have a bunch of selfie videos. And the camera definitely delivers as a vlogging phone. I'd actually consider this as a vlogging phone uh, better than what the Oppo Reno 12 Pro is offering, maybe even better than the Honor 200 Pro. So yeah, pretty nice. And finally, we talk about the night. This one here. Reflections appear. Stabilization is not that impressive anymore. And there's quite a bit of grain. Once again, reflections here. The lighting is better in this one, I'll be honest. And stabilization in the end, not that bad. Okay, at least the halos aren't big. We're done with the camera. The battle is very tight with the Motorola H50 Ultra and the Honor 200 Pro and the Oppo Reno 12 Pro. This one has extras. The other ones may have extras or not. Tight battle for sure. When it comes to connectivity, the phone provides you with everything you need, starting with 5G to Wi-Fi 6. There's NFC at 360 degrees for payments. There's dual SIM support. There's GPS dual band. There's a USB-C 2.0 port at the bottom. So yeah. We cover everything, including Bluetooth 5.4. Uh, the calls were pretty loud and clear, and uh, we used the speed test to measure things out. And uh, let's see how we did. We go here, we go to the results. And in uh, 5G, we reached a pretty impressive 805 mega per second in download and a 65.4 mega per second in upload, which is mighty impressive. And on Wi-Fi, I'm pretty sure you can definitely reach 700 mega per second easily. Okay, and now it's time to talk about the software. Now, as far as the software is concerned, this is Android 14 with uh, something called the uh, Realme UI 5.0 applied on top of it. And uh, we have here the About Device section. So here you can also add extra RAM, up to 12 gigs extra, not that you need it anymore. And here we have the special features like the AI Assistance. AI Assistant includes smart recognition, so it can definitely recognize things after taking a screenshot you can recognize and extract text uh, from uh, photos for example you can also activate it with two fingers and then we have the ai smart loop which is one of the core features of the phone it has been highly promoted it re resembles basically um, the honor magic portal so let's say uh, you just took a screenshot of something and you want to take that something and you can definitely send it to the site here and you can post it on facebook and uh, not just post it on Facebook, you can choose to post it on a feed in your group. So there are these sub levels for each interaction, which I didn't see on the Honor Magic Portal. So it's a plus. You can search it with Google Lens or you can actually search it on Google Maps or send it to your notes. You cannot just do that with uh, photos. You can also do that with text. So yeah, if I enter the, let's say, BBC website. Got it. Okay. And if I select a bunch of text from here, let's actually maybe open this up. I press it and drag it to the side. I can post the text on Facebook, put it in my file doc like a clipboard for later, look it up on Google Maps and the list goes on and on because there's a lot of things you can do with the compatible apps. And by the way, AI is also triggered via the window here. You have the file doc where you can see your recently saved photos and uh, your recently saved um, uh, text. You can also do translate of what you can see on the screen and there's more. For in YouTube, for example, you can see here the gesture recognition can be used and if I'm in a scrollable area here, I should be able to use my hand to scroll up or down. Let's just try it right now, hopefully. 
I'm still struggling to how to get this to work. I saw it on the rival phone Oppo Reno 12 Pro, but here it's actually taking me a while to learn how to use it. Gesture recognition, air gesture can be used. It definitely recognizes my hand, but takes a while to get it to actually work. So you should probably get in the settings and check it out. So we have the AI assistant. We talked about that. We have the smart loop. We have the smart sensing. This is it. Air gestures. You can see them here with a finger or with your hand like this. I actually did everything right, but still not exactly functioning well. So actually learn it. Low how to scroll all a page. Okay, so let's do that. Hold the palm up. Flick the hand down. I actually do not know what I'm doing wrong. Anyway, work in progress, maybe. And uh, let's go further than that and see what else we have here. So we have the news feed in the leftmost area of the screen. We also can pinch the screen to customize it with wallpapers. Icons, which is basically the same package as OnePlus and Oppo. Widgets, which are actually not bad looking. We have dedicated RAM for games. So gaming is important here. Layout, transitions and more. Home screen mode, layout and so much more. And we're back to the settings to find the extras. So in the special features, we also have dedicated RAM for games. As I said before, we have split view, have floating windows, quick return, quick launch, which are shortcuts triggered up from the fingerprint scanner, which by the way is optical. It's around here and quite fast. The sidebar, which lets you access quite a few features, including the file dock. We have a kids mode, simple mode, and a new one is the riding mode. So if you're on a bicycle or a motorbike, the experience will get a bit more simple, so you won't be bothered while handling that. Realme Lab lets you connect to two pair of headphones, one wired, one Bluetooth, and you can measure your pulse using the fingerprint scanner from here. We have a history, and you can write what was happening when you achieved that pulse. Now, we also have other special features advertised here, the O haptics, the O emoji, the floating window, the one-handed mode, the spatial audio, so there's a lot to unpack here. We also have customization with always on display, themes, icons, fonts, and edge lighting. There aren't many pre-installed apps, but they're quite useful, especially this area here, the tools, which are available in this folder. So yeah, here, for example, we have the infrared remote, we have the games, the phone manager, the video, the Zen space. This is the phone manager, which searches for viruses. It manages your resources. It even has payment protection. While this one here is uh, the gaming department where you can see your games, you can explore them, you can set profiles for games, allocate resources. And this one here lets you use the infrared at the top of the phone to control these devices. Okay, so that's pretty much it as far as I know and it's time for the verdict. So the pros and cons, a super bright screen on this handset for sure. LTPO, the battery breaks records, it's fantastic. The camera is quite good in close-ups and portrait and stabilization. The performance is flagship killer level. The price is quite appealing and there are multiple configurations to pick from. On the negative side, certification should have been a bit higher. We have plastic for the frame and the back. The mirror finish draws fingerprints and the connectivity is just USB-C 2.0 plus some overexposure in the video department. The conclusion is that since it's a battery phone, since it can take vlogs with a selfie camera and since the colors are quite spot on, it's good for travelers, I would say long distance. If the battery were worse, it would be short distance travels, but this one is for long distances. Not so much for gaming, I would have to say, in spite of the many games, but between the bright screen and the large battery, I would say that you can definitely travel with it and forget to charge it. That's the most important part. People who don't go to the hotel very often should be pretty happy with it. Now the camera is fine, the battery is, uh, battery is very tough with the Honor 200 Pro, with the Oppo Reno 12 Pro, with the Motorola H50 Pro and Ultra. It's tough, Realme usually doesn't get there, but this phone gets there more than its predecessors. That's it from us, goodbye.